My um, my dad actually went to high school with John, John Little. That, okay. And they not grew up together, but kind of, my dad grew up in Toronto and then he kind of finished growing up in, up in Bracebridge and Muskoka and they went to high school together. I think they, you know, did the old school weightlifting thing way back when, but when I was 16, I think is when I started training with him. I knew a little bit about it before I went to see John, but when he started explaining it to me, he didn't treat me like I was a little brat, 16 year old kid. It was like, this is why we do it. And if you don't understand, ask me. So I always, like it just made sense. Yeah. It made yeah. sense. And I always, I mean, in high school, you go to the weight room with your buddies and you lift a bunch of weight and you get stuck on a rep and then you stop and put the weight down. Like I always struggled with why the hell that made sense. So I think that's kind of why I absorbed it so quickly with John. But he never really gave me an opportunity to not know why he said something, like what the rationale was behind doing this and doing that and why not doing this. It was never just do this. That's what I say. It's like do this and that's why. Mm seeing how little you can do to get a sustained benefit was like our focus then, not how much you can make somebody endure. Yeah. You look at the traditional gym model, uh, oversell and under deliver was never a thing that I considered doing at all. And when I opened the place, you know, even John told me like, you're going to get burnt out if you're working five days, 12 hour days sort of thing. Yeah. But I never, I didn't really pay much I just figured out oh, no, I'll be fine. I'll just go and I'll have one room and I'll work my butt off and maybe have one other staff. And I just really didn't think that I wouldn't be able to do it. I just assumed, you know, if I keep trying and I keep figuring it out and fine tuning it, like eventually I'll, I'll get the money that I had. So I went to the bank with my measly little business plan and my little Excel spreadsheet of this is what I could do. And the, the end result was a very positive one. So that's all I figured they would look at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I've never really been laughed at that <laughs> as hard as in that scenario ever. I was, huh. I, I was 20 years old or 21. I didn't have any money saved up. And here I was like asking for a, a whole bunch of money to go and start a business that I didn't have, really have any proof that would work. Yeah. Um, so finally, uh, you know, I went back a couple more times with my little business plans and asked them really nicely if they could get creative and, they did, and, and sure enough, they gave. They ended up giving me uh, enough money to start the place. So, but it was a very thin budget, a very very thin budget. We built the gym as we wanted it to be made, so we didn't get the landlord to come in. We ended up sleeping. There were nights where we slept in my office at the gym, so we could work up and, or sort of wake up and keep working, like keep painting or doing the drywall or doing the flooring or doing whatever we needed to do. So, it was. Uh, I knew exactly what I wanted to have happen. Yeah. And, and we probably could have done it more efficiently for sure, but we just did it. We just awesome. got up and did it. We had a 63 year old woman two weeks ago did her first chin up. Wow. Awesome. On that scene. It was really, really cool. She, she's, a, she's a determined, determined woman. And uh, she's really in control of her own health and fitness and all that kind of stuff, like an N equals one type person. And she came to me, well, she's been with us for about three years, but when we got the Multi-X, she immediately declared that it, was, it had always been a goal to be able to do a chin-up. And I you know, explained the difference between like throwing yourself up over the bar versus contracting all the way through. Yeah. And over a 12-month period, and this is so cool, um, over a 12-month period, she had an exposure of, you know, she touched that machine six times. That's it. So the first time, she did body weight only, just the negative. Walk up on the stairs, lift her feet up, lower herself down. Then the next time, which you know was probably six weeks later, she would put 30 pounds, which was the minimum, walk yeah. up above, lift her feet up, lower herself down. And we're talking like 10 seconds. When she couldn't maintain a six-second pace, that's the end of the set because it's just a little bit too quick for, for my liking. She... Then, you know, took a few months off, came back 40 pounds, 45 pounds. And then out of nowhere, um, she walked in the room and was like, I'm going to, I want to try a chin up today. Grabbed onto the bar, hadn't touched the machine in four months, dead hang, six seconds up to the top, started laughing, was so excited, six seconds down to the bottom, went to pull again, was laughing too hard to do it. She was so proud of herself. So that was the end of the set. That's what every 
trainer probably chases those big tangible results where you can physically see how much you're helping these people along. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I opened the place in the first place to be able to help people. So we do a lot of rehabilitation too. And I don't want to knock, you know, having you come in and making you stronger. Like that's awesome too. Don't get me wrong. But you see somebody that's had a knee replacement after two years of having knee pain and they're healed and they start to come to you and then they're able to play golf again or something like that. Like that is the most gratifying. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I don't want to take away from all of the people that haven't had knee replacements and, you know, they were pretty strong when they came in because it's still really cool to help them out and see them actualize the benefit of like being able to play with their grandchildren or not worrying about lifting their luggage and all that kind of stuff. But so now I've also got the added benefit of like helping like-minded individuals have a space where they can do the same thing. That's a really, really cool benefit that we're just starting to kind of ramp up. It's pretty cool seeing your staff get busy and we're a small operation and we don't have a we don't have a, a policies and procedures manual that's this big that governs the way everybody can do everything. It's a pretty casual atmosphere. Um, and just like seeing them get busy and seeing them be able to help people, I, maybe that sounds corny, but that's the whole reason that we have the gym open right now is to be able to have that environment where we can do that all the time. People in our government certainly have to start thinking about like preventative maintenance rather than reactionary maintenance. So you're out of shape, so you start working out. Yes, it's good that you're starting working out, but why don't we focus on not getting out of shape in the first place? And it comes back to that sustainable approach sort of thing. So I, it's not easy or sorry, it's not difficult to see that people are starting to prefer a more specialized approach to all of these things. Like we're a scope of practice place like high intensity training in an efficient manner that's safe and sustainable is like what we do and where we come to it. we're not going to change that uh, and people are starting to seek out those more personalized approaches and personalized in terms of experience not you know you do a leg press and i'll do an extension and a leg curl like personalized in the sense that like for them preventative very very centered on their goals type of thing instead of a, just a big box that you walk into where there's a whole bunch of people doing the latest trend side of things. So that is really, really cool to see. Um